Dunbar definitely has some fun with this one. Hey guys, Dusty Baker at Cross Centers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Coming to check on the Dunbar herd. Let's give them some cubes. Cube day for the Dunbar herd. Look at them. Got all of them. They're so excited. Peach is always the first one here. Hey everybody. Look at him. Hey, big fella. Hey, big guy. You ready, buddy? All right, we got the Dunbar herd taken care of. Got them a full sack of cubes. These calves are getting big. Some of them still got their red color, and but they're a decent sized calves. Um, they should be really shedding it off right now. Um, you can see that one right there. It's pretty much got a lot of it off. It's so funny to kind of see that red color still at this time of the year. So we've got these four calves down here with the Dunbar herd. Uh, that were born in late August and then the fifth one is up there with Eleanor We've got Eleanor up with the yearlings, which some of you may already know that but so with these guys here We're uh, still thinking about taking them over to the Ponderosa and then probably what we're gonna do pretty soon is take the mamas that have already had um, Calves that are starting the weaning process which are actually already at Ponderosa as we speak um, mamas like peaches here bell star is one of them over there and then the other one is going to be kit and so and kit's over there with dunbar those three those three mamas are ready to go to the ponderosa so what i'm going to start doing is go ahead and open up some gates up there where they can go and get into the crowd just like we catch them before to actually work them um this time we just need to be able to get them corralled uh, so we can actually 
um, load them up through our loadout area on my trailer. And then what we'll do is we'll take those three probably and we'll go ahead and take Eleanor and her calf as well. We have vaccinated Eleanor and her calf already for the fall. Um, they'll need it in the spring obviously, but I think Eleanor and her calf will be ready to go. We'll just have to be very careful loading out Eleanor and her calf uh, just because her calf is still so small, just like her. So, uh, but that's kind of the thought is we can at least take those three mamas over and then Eleanor. So those four mamas over. Um, these calves right here are still not ready to be weaned. They won't be weaned until January, February. If you do the months, these babies were, most of them were born August 20th. So that means that, um, if you do the math on six or seven months for weaning, uh, for the time of weaning, you're looking into January, February. So we'll separate them. They'll start the weaning process and we'll keep the mamas, um, separated from them. I really am contemplating about it and I'll show you guys. You guys let me know what you think. I've been contemplating about getting a flatbed. Um, I use, you know, I've got the toolbox here in my truck, but I'm really thinking about just getting a, a flatbed, have a gooseneck hook up in it still, and getting a feeder um, right here, just basically a cake feeder that goes right here. There's a local company not far from us um, here in Mill Creek, Oklahoma. They make uh, cake feeders. It's one of the things that they do. And um, I thought about getting, taking this off, getting a flatbed and putting a cake feeder on the back of my truck. And you can actually run it from the inside of your truck with a remote control. But I think it would be a lot safer when it comes to feeding these animals, you know, whether it's here or at the Ponderosa. Um, you see how I'm always trying to feed out of the holding the feed sack holding the 50 pound feed sack inside my truck running these cubes out for these guys and uh, i want to make it to be able to where it's a lot safer and if brooks is with me you know uh, make it safer too just by uh, pushing a remote control and the feed will basically come out and i never even have to get out of the vehicle if you guys have seen those before and i use this truck for everything i use it for work at our cabins it's my personal truck and it's obviously a farm truck so having a flatbed would be nice um you kind of lose your cargo area um, but i can get a flatbed with some tool boxes in it and then put a bunk feeder on the back of it and still haul my gooseneck trailer around so you guys let me know what you think about taking this off getting a flatbed and putting a cake feeder on the back of my truck We got these guys taken care of. I'm gonna run up and check Eleanor and see how they're doing and let you guys see Eleanor and her little baby, Nora. By the way, Kevin's been letting our Southwest corner paddock rest. And look at this green that's been coming up here. It's had a lot of time and a lot of rest on it. Just another little extra rotation. Just uh, because we've had some moisture and this pasture has had some time off, we can let this rest, let some of that grass grow up a little bit. Some winter grass, as you can see in here. Uh, I think Kevin's probably planted some stuff out here as well, too. Just another little paddock that we can let them graze on once we uh, once we want to rotate them in here. And I think we'll rotate them in here pretty soon, um, Kevin says, and give them a little bit of, give them some green grass. You can really see how much rain we've had up here. This is the lane that Kevin uses to, um, the yearlings and Eleanor over here and her calf. 
Um, but Kevin uses this lane. You can see the tractor marks. Do right here to this pasture where Dunbar and all of them are are uh, fed hay. This is how Kevin gets there. So I'm gonna open this up. This is how we catch them normally. They'll come through here. They'll go down this lane and they can come in the corral. There's a long stretch over there. This is an easy way for them to get up here and do that so that they can come up here. So I'm gonna I'll go ahead and open this up. See, I just fed them cubes down in the pasture down there. Um, but so they can come through here and then in this way. This feeder we had in the uh, pasture with Dunbar and them for a while. Uh, part of our uh, summer feeding program towards the end of the year to try to um, uh, push some of these females like in uh, July and stuff like that. So uh, kind of help them through the breeding season or, or in the beginning of breeding season. Well, so Dunbar decided to uh, use these two tires as uh, to show off his dominant traits, I guess, during breeding season. Um, so because of that, uh, he destroyed these two tires. And uh, the guy who put them on here uh, before uh, must have tightened those lug nuts down really, really good. So uh, I can't get them off. So I'm going to have to go over here. I'm going to hook up here to the feeder. I'm going to drive it over to a mom and Kevin's neighbor. He's got an air socket gun and I'm going to hook it up to it and see if I can break these suckers loose because I got to get some feed in it is why, uh, because I need it for the yearlings to start our feeding program. So let's uh, go see if we can break these things loose. Guys think these tires may have seen better days look at this one Dunbar definitely had some fun with this one all right we got these loose I'm gonna pull it back over we got these loose which is awesome now we can take this back to mom and Kevin's I'm gonna take these tires off take them to a local tire guy and see if we can get some new ones put on What a bison can do to a tire. Just bison ranching. Things you do for these guys. <laughs> Oof. All right, off to the tire shop. See, uh, see what the damage is and see how much it'll cost to get these bad boys replaced. It sucks to buy brand new tires, but you know, for a trailer that you're gonna put in a pasture. So we'll see, maybe there's a way we can protect these tires and keep Dunbar and the others from rubbing them. All right, so we are back at Mom and Kevin's. Got two new tires, 10 ply tires, and we got to put them on this bad boy here. This sucker has seen some better days, but uh, it still serves its purpose, which is why I'm still using it. So we got two new tires, but since I've got these two tires, all we got to do is put them on. But in the meantime, I went ahead and ordered feed. I don't know when it'll be delivered. It usually takes up to a week uh, to be, once you get put on the schedule, can take up to, you know, five, six business days before you ever get the feed delivered because it's just chaotic at this time of the year. There's a lot of feed 
being hauled around in this county and other places, other counties too as well, um, not just Murray County. So um, at least we're on the schedule now. But this feeder, uh, when we get it filled up, it's not going actually where Dunbar is, which is a good thing tire-wise. This will be used for our yearlings into the uh, winter feeding program with those guys. So yeah, and plus I've got my got my helper with me now so uh maybe she'll help me put on some tires what do you think yes <laughs> yeah okay and maya all right let's get these tires on loaded brooks Stay back there, okay? This one. That's high enough. Oh yeah. Perfect. We got it. Say we got it. We got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think these need to be Dunbar. Good. You wanna see Dunbar? Yeah. Me too. Me too. We'll go see him in just a second. Well, my helper got cold, so she's uh, she's hanging out in the truck. <laughs> it has finally cooled down here in Oklahoma, which is kind of nice. Um, it is December, it should be cold, but. All right, got the lug nuts tightened down, and um, now I'm gonna go ahead and release them so they can sink down. What? Brooks sees some deer. So, oh, she's telling me to be quiet. That's what, I, that's what she's telling me to do. Um, I'm gonna set this down and then uh, tighten them a little more. This thing will be ready. I actually leave it right here, kind of in this circle drive here of mom and Kevin's. And the reason I do that is because it's easy for the truck, uh, the 18 wheeler, the feed truck, when it when they deliver, it's just an easy little turnaround for them here in this area. So they can kind of make one big loop and it's, uh, I'm trying to make it easy for them. And I don't have to pull this, but I don't know, maybe a hundred yards, which is not very far. Set this down, get them tightened, and the sucker will be ready to go. There you have it. Brand new 10 ply, 235s, 80 R16 tires on the bunk feeder set and ready to go. Yep. Yep, yep. Hopefully those will last a long time. See, the there is a there is a benefit to having this type of feeder. Obviously, on wheels, you can it's easily mobile. It's it's very mobile. Obviously, you can take it anywhere you want. You can even take it and go get it filled up. The reason I don't go and get it filled up is because it's about 20 or 25 minutes across town to the feed store where we get our uh, specific feed. Um, and this thing is just so heavy. It can hold almost 14,000 pounds. So seven tons of feed, right? I just reduced the risk of anything. And I, I, it's just easy uh, for them to come and deliver it. And I'll just basically move it from here over there in that area. So I just don't like traveling with it because it is a lot of weight. But the benefit is that it's on wheels and you can take it wherever you want. Uh, uh, the bad part about it is the tires, obviously. Tires go bad. They set in a pasture um, or wherever you have them. They may sit there or animals typically like to rub on them. And obviously that's what happened to these. They were worn out and uh, they got weak and the sidewall got weak, obviously. And that's where Dunbar made it a toy and rubbed it on 
I'm on it, I'm sure. And uh, it may not have just been him. It may have been the others as well. But, well, of course, we'll just blame it on him because he's the most destructive. So, <laughs> it's easy to blame it on Dunbar. But this one, compared to my Oklahoma Pride Feeder, like the blue one, at the Ponderosa, it's on skids. So, you don't have to deal with the tires. Now, it is on the skids, which means it is mobile. It means you just can't, like, physically move it and travel with it. Uh, or take it to town, obviously, because when that sucker is full, it's sitting there and it's staying there. So uh, with this feet in it, you can still move it around. Uh, the Oklahoma Pride one, I love it and it is heavy duty, uh, but you don't have to worry about the tires. You don't have to worry about your animals rubbing on it and, and having to replace the tires um, on that Oklahoma Pride one. So there's benefits, there's pros and cons to both, but you know, it's kind of nice to have um, one that is mobile and one that is stationary uh, with still some mobility and you can compare the two and uh, hopefully that helps you guys out there if you do raise cattle and have had had these before or you raise bison or are going to raise bison kind of what the difference is between having uh, one on skids and one on some axles with tires so all right little girl is asking to go see Dunbar so we're going to go see Dunbar again second time for me today There he is, he's out there. See him running. There he is, what's up buddy? Here he is. Who is that? Say dum Dumbar. Dumbar. Look at him. He's a stallion, isn't he? Big old head. Pretty, isn't he? See the calves? He got cubes today, so he's not entertained right now. All right, kind of have some big things happening coming up pretty soon, guys. It may be in the next episode or two. Nervous, a little anxious though, um, just because this is going to be a start of a process that um, we've been wanting to do for a long time, and uh, it's kind of tough, maybe uh, kind of sad in a way because um, some of these animals are going to go to the Ponderosa herd, um, to the Ponderosa in general um, for the first time ever. And um, that's where hopefully they're going to live out the rest of their lives and, um, and, and happiness and, what, and whatnot and all that. And so uh, it's going to be um, eventually, you know, we'd like to take the whole herd, basically. That, that's here with Dunbar. Um, but it's going to start with these three that are already have their calves weaned. And their calves are already at the Ponderosa. So they're already over there. Uh, to join those two that were born at the Ponderosa. So um, kind of some uh, some changes or, you know, some changes. And um, that's a uh, part of it because, you know, like Kit, Kit came with Big Joe. And um, so she can be reunited with Big Joe again for the first time in, in over a year, I guess that'd be, since Bellstar and Peaches, both who are um, are part of my very first bison i've ever had and they were pretty much raised here i got them i got those first five which with dunbar was included from gerald parsons from doc parsons that i talk about all the time and do some stuff with uh so peaches and bell star are in that foundation herd that i started with in my very first bison here at this place including this guy right here so they'll be transitioning over and then later on um in the beginning of next year, we'll start more transitions as we start weaning calves off of uh, these mamas here. So more work to be done at the Ponderosa, more fence to be built, of course, which that's what it takes to be able to do this because we still have more ground to cover that bison still haven't been on. We still got more fence to build uh, to make it available so that we can take more of these guys over there. And, and if you haven't caught me talking about this, we're not 
we're, we're, there's still gonna be bison here at Mom and Kevin's. And then don't forget our, about our princess, Eleanor. What we're probably gonna do is Eleanor will be able to reunite with the herd as well. We've got her and her baby separated so we could get her baby healthy. So anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys for watching us. Next move is we're gonna take some mamas over to the Ponderosa. Hope you guys are ready for it. Thank you guys for watching. Keep ranching.